All right, number 39. Your vertical asymptotes are just like your domain and coming from the denominator. Again, if you put this in parentheses and typed it in your, to your calculator, you could kind of approximate where they are. But we're going to set the denominator equal to 0 because that's where the vertical asymptotes are going to show up. Minus 6 plus 1. X minus 6 x plus 1. So x equals 6 and x equals negative 1 are where our vertical asymptotes are. And you can plug it into your calculator to double check yourself. Um, so graph this rational function. How you're going to help yourself out is just like on the last problem 4x plus 10 equals 0, and so 4x equals negative 10, so x equals negative 10 over 4, or x equals negative 5 halves, is your vertical asymptote. Your horizontal asymptote has everything to do with the degree, and because the numbers get bigger on the bottom faster, p is less than q, y equals 0 is your horizontal asymptote. And so you're going to be able to graph this by, here's your horizontal asymptote, negative 5 halves is negative 2 and a half. And so using your calculator as an aid, 3 divided by 4x plus 10. You could also um, utilize your y-intercept if you wanted to, which if you plugged in 0, you'd get 3 tenths, um, but it's really not that big of a deal. Horizontal asymptotes, we were just talking about it. Um, in this case, p is equal to q because the degree on top is equal to the degree on the bottom. And so this is when you plug in really big numbers, you get 6 times as much on the top as you do on the bottom. y equals a over b or y equals 6 over 1, because the leading coefficient on the bottom is 1. So y equals 6. Again, plug it into your graphing calculator and confirm that. Um, next one, trying to simplify this expression. We need common denominators to add things together. And so, unfortunately, they don't have anything in common, and so we're going to multiply them by each other. I'm going to multiply by x minus 6 over x minus 6. 2x plus 1 over 2x plus 1. So we're going to have to foil this out on the, on the left. We get 2x minus 6x squared plus 1 minus 3x. And that's got the common denominator of 2x plus 1 and x minus 6. And so then we're going to add to that 2x minus 12. Just making sure we distribute. We're going to add to it, and so we're going to combine our like terms. We get negative 6x squared. We got a 2x and a 2x making a 4x minus 3x leaves just x. And then 1 minus 12, negative 11. 2x plus 1 x minus 6. No worries about multiplying out the bottom. Of course, if the answer's got it multiplied out, then you'd want to multiply it out and just double check. Um, nothing multiplies to positive 66 and adds to 1, and so that's, otherwise you want to look to see if you can factor and cross, cross out a common factor. What type of function? Well, we've talked about linear functions which are y equals mx plus b. Talked about quadratic, which look like the ax squared, anything with that x squared in it, as long as it doesn't have anything higher than x squared. Talked about cubic and general polynomials, which cubic would be x to the third, quartic x to the fourth, quintic x to the fifth. Uh, we've talked about radical functions, which um, 
have a square root in them or a cubed root in them. And these are called rational functions, where you have a fraction in them. As long as you have an x of sorts on the bottom, because if you just had 2x plus 3 over 5, it would be a linear function. But as soon as you put maybe a 5x squared in there, it's a rational function. So the answer to this one's a rational, because you've got 1 over x plus 3. So how do we solve 44? It's got a fraction on the right and on the left, and so we can just cross multiply, really. So you get 15, 5 times 3 is 15, and x times x plus 2, or 15 and x squared plus 2x. Quadratic, set it equal to 0. x squared plus 2x, subtract the 15. And so we're looking for what multiplies to negative 15 and adds to 2. Negative 15, x plus 5, x minus 3. And so x equals negative 5, and x equals positive 3. It's essential that when you're solving equations like this, you double check that neither of these numbers make your denominator 0. All right, 45, the product of these two. Um, what's nice is that these are already factored, and you notice that they're the same. So you get x to the fourth over x cubed. 4x is on top, 3 on the bottom. Just leave 1x. All right, 46. Um, in 44, we had a fraction equal to a fraction, and so your next step would be either one of two things. Uh, the easiest step would be to just cross multiply. However, we also talked about another method. Um, so one step would be to cross multiply. But we also talked about another method where, see how it's x plus 3 and 3 times x plus 3. If you multiply through by common denominator, multiply both sides lowest common denominator. So if you multiply both sides by 3 times x plus 3, that it does essentially the same thing as cross-canceling. All right, 47. This right here is just a fraction divided by a fraction. And so that's x plus 6 over 4 times the reciprocal x over 2x minus 3. Neither one of those can be factored, and so we just write it all together. And we just leave it like that. Um, 48, 2x squared, and 3x. And so we're going to need a 6x. So I'm going to multiply this one by 3 over 3 to get 12 over 6x squared. And this one needs a 2 and another x to get it to be x squared, so 2x. So add to that 2x over 6x squared until you get 12 plus 2x over 6x squared. Now, those have a common factor of 2 in them. So factor out the 2, you get 6 plus x. 6 over x squared, and the 6 and the 2 reduce to 6 plus x over 3x squared. One more problem to come.